Hello Linux fans, Rob here and welcome to Linux Quest. Well, we're uh, coming up on another weekend, um, you know, so uh, this one in particular though is kind of exciting because you've got all of the Ubuntu releases and all the variations out there, so it's been fun browsing uh, my favorite channels and checking out reviews here. Chris has got uh, Ubuntu, Joe Collins has got one posted or had one posted here on Ubuntu Mate 1804, so lots of you know, 1804 things here. If you go over to Destination Linux, the latest video slash podcast there, uh, over two hours, folks, features Martin Wimpress, um, you know, of Ubuntu Mate. So uh, let's just go on down the list here. There's a few others I've watched, and I haven't, let's see here, I haven't watched the latest one here from uh, DistroTube. He's got Mate, lots of Ubuntu Mate videos there. And moving down, let's see what AJ's got recently. I think Linux and other stuff has got one recent. Okay, nothing. Let's see what he's got there. Nothing there. He's going back to elementary OS, it looks like. Uh, Linux and other stuff has got his Ubuntu 1804 uh, that he's checking out there. Uh, let's see here. Michael's got one transforming Ubuntu Mate uh, over to full Unity. Switch to Linux. Has he got anything going there? Who's looking at your DNA? Average Linux user. Haven't been to his site in a while. Anyway, you get the point here. Lots of excitement around the latest Ubuntu release and their spins. Now, the one I'm excited about is not GTK-based desktops like all the ones we've seen here. I'm excited about the Plasma desktop release of Kubuntu. So, Kubuntu 18.04, but that's not what this video is about, and that's not what we're going to talk about today. We are going to talk about KDE Neon, uh, which is based off of Ubuntu 16.04 uh, LTS. So, I've got to give some love to this distro, and I've also got to kind of eat a little bit of, uh, I don't know if you'd call it Crow, maybe, maybe Linux Crow, if there is such a thing. Because I'd kind of written off KDE Neon. I tried it probably three times early on in various stages and was unsuccessful. It, it would become unstable. I would get weird system crashes. And I'm talking about a system, folks, that was all Intel-based that every other Linux distro in the world ran great on with the exception of KDE Neon. It was just one of those things where I'd jump into Discover, which is something we're going to take a look at here in just a moment. Um, uh, and it was kind of half baked and not ready and, and just a, really a problem, you know? And so I'd wind up using it for maybe a day or two and then wiping it out and putting something else on. And so I'd kind of written off KD Neon for quite some time until recently, uh, about three weeks or so ago, maybe three and a half, four weeks ago now, I installed this fresh, expecting kind of, sort of to be disappointed again. But I am here to tell you, I am far from disappointed. In fact, this has turned out to be one of my top favorite distros now. It's run that well. Now, I'm running on different hardware. This isn't an all-Intel-based system. This is an AMD-based system now. But there have been some major improvements in just a few key places that, have, that has taken KDE Neon to a level of complete and utter stability, Plasma is now at a point where it is as stable and smooth and as light-filling as any other Linux desktop environment, including XFCE, with the exception of XFCE setup and i3 setup on a few uh, distros out there that you know that are just incredibly light and incredibly fast. But I'll match Plasma, the current version of Plasma, um, in just fluid response, customization, of course. It's always been the customization king. Um, in cohesive look and feel, I'll put it up against anything right now. It's, it's become that good. So, yeah, fanboy here, okay, if you didn't pick up on that. But one of the nice things about KDE Neon in particular is you are constantly getting current updates. And depends on how you look at it, that could be a negative. I'll tell you that there have been a lot of updates over the last three or so weeks. However, 
All of those updates have come through flawlessly. No system issues whatsoever. Let's jump over here to System and go to Info Center. And I just had an update today, as a matter of fact, updating Latte Doc to 7.5. So this is the last, I guess the, the, uh, this will be the, um, I guess the LTS release until they go to version 8 is what I understand. And I'll speak more about Latte Doc here in just a moment. And then also the KDE platform was recently updated to 5.9. So what do we have here under Plasma version? We're at 5.12.4 with the framework version of 5.45. QT version at 5.10. Uh, kernel here is not at 5.14 yet. We're at 5.13, generic kernel. And so, you know, but very recent on anything to do with Plasma. Um, so that's one of the benefits here if you're into that kind of thing and you're not afraid of, uh, you know, something breaking. It's been fun and exciting to see kind of what changes have come along the way. And I've um, kind of set up and watching several of the KDE slash Plasma forums to see where these tweaks and changes are. And there's a lot of buzz. I mean, a lot of buzz. Uh, in all aspects of KDE slash Plasma, if you start, you know, if it's something that you get into, it's like anything else. You start hitting the forums and you start uh, reading posts and things like that. And you see, man, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Now, the other thing I want to talk about here is Discover. So I believe I told you in the opening there that Discover was one of the, you know, the pains. It was one of the issues I had in trying to use KD Neon previously. Well, I am thrilled to tell you that the work behind Discover has paid off because now I think it's probably 97, 98% of the way there. And I'm really starting to get my head around where Discover is now. I mean, what it's all about. So it's not just, um, you know, it's just not just a place to go and install software. Discover's more than that. Uh, yes, you can install your apps from the repository. Uh, yes, you can go into application categories and you can search for software, and that's all terrific. But you can also install snaps and flat packs and app images all using Discover. Now, with an app image, okay, strike app image because with an app image, you can just execute it and run it. Um, but nevertheless, snaps and flat packs fully integrated into Discover. But it's also more than that. So we see here Plasma add-ons. So this is a section where you can go and go into your various categories for your themes, for your icon packs, wallpapers, effects, so on and so forth. And then application add-ons. So if you wanted to get into Caden Live render profiles or templates. So it is a complete all-in-one package for pretty much everything Plasma uh, or everything KDE, if you will. Um, and so for that, I appreciate it because what I have found is the more time I spend at it, the more I realize that there has been a lot of work. Very nice long descriptions of any application. Very easy to add and remove the software. Um, you know, it's easy to find your way around and navigate. Uh, so I just thank you to the folks, whoever's working on Discover. Uh, your work is very much appreciated because now KDE Neon is a joy to use. And I think, you know, with any other Plasma desktop environment uh, distribution, be it Arch-based or whatever, if, well, not Arch-based because from there you're probably going to use um, you know, you're not going to use Discover. You're probably going to go in and and pull from, um, I'm drawing a blank, folks. But the other thing I want to talk about are updates. The updating uh, through Discover has been flawless. It gives you a nice, long, detailed list. And I, I just had an update. Um, the AUR, Arch User Repository. Let me back up on that. Rewind, Arch User Repository. A lot of people are going to use that or just pull in from the standard repos. Um, you know, within Interagos, you don't see Discover set up, for example. Uh, that's why I mentioned that. Okay, fast forward again. Updates. 
Updates through Discover have been great. You get a nice long description of what it is that's updating. I actually should have saved a few updates just so that you could see it. All right, so I'm going to sum it up with Discover. You've you finally arrived. You are there. Um, I'm not afraid to use you anymore. Not that I was ever afraid, as in scared, but afraid that, okay, this is going to be a clunky mess. Okay, let's talk about Latte Doc for a minute, and I believe I mentioned earlier, so it's recently been updated to 7.5, and this is mainly bug fixes from my understanding, uh, but this is going to be the final release until they move over to 8 and beyond, so this is, I guess you'd say, the LTS for Latte Doc. I can't say enough really good things about Latte Doc. Uh, very configurable. You can basically open up just about anything and then just keep it there on the dock. So uh, let's see here. I've got that. I've got Wavebox. Let's just go to uh, Digicam, for example. And um, apparently this is going to take a while to launch. There we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, probably the, I think that's the first time I've actually launched Digicam. But anyway, just an example here. So the icons here, you can see this line under it indicating that you have it open and you're using it. Now you see a dot. Dot means that it's active, but it's just minimized. But let's say we decided we want to keep this here on the dock. We can simply right-click and go to pin, and now you're going to see that there. We'll go ahead and close that out. Just wanted to illustrate that. Now let's say for a minute, uh, so it's going to launch on in. Uh, after it's gone through its initial setting. Let's say for a minute, let me go ahead and close this out. Let's say for a minute that you did not like that icon. You can go into one of the ways that Plasma is so configurable. Uh, you could go into graphics, for example, and go into Digicam and right click and go to edit application. And I'm going through these steps just to show you how well this all applies to Latte Doc. And then we could go in and choose let's go to uh, uh where did i mess up here okay i met up oh, wait a minute let's go back let's right click and go to edit applications now let's go into graphics and go to digicam there we go back on track and we could go in and choose an icon so i'm just going to do this to show you how well that applies over on the latte doc side so i'm going to choose something totally different from what we see there. There's your original Digicam and we're going to just take that here to GPIC. So we'll go ahead and choose that and save. And now you'll see that that has immediately updated here on Latte Doc. So nicely done. Uh, but it works very well with any theming that you have in place. I'm not going to step through that for the sake of time on this video. Um, you get some interactions with various uh, folders or links that you put here depending on what it is. So if we right click on the folder, uh, you could get quick access to various um, subfolders. And then again with other things here, so nothing there other than new window, but you do get interaction. If you go to the clock and you click on it, it's going to launch into calendar. And there's lots of settings within Latte Doc, and I could probably do a separate video uh, on all of these settings. In fact, that might be something that I do since it's been recently updated. Uh, but lots of fun to go in and configure and set up. Needless to say, it fits in extremely well with Plasma in that it's highly configurable. So, um, Folks working with Latte Doc, kudos, big time kudos, great job. It allows me to use Plasma in a way that keeps things extremely clean, fast, and fluid, simple. Uh, you can do it all from here. So love it, love it. All right, moving on. The other thing I want to talk about, can't say it enough, said it, said it multiple times, and that's Dolphin. Dolphin is absolutely a joy to use. It is the best file manager of any operating system out there. Yes, that includes you Mac. That includes you Windows. Uh, Dolphin kicks tail. If you've never spent time with Dolphin and you're someone who gets into configuring your file manager, I mean, let's face it, you got to be into that. <laughs> Otherwise, you just, you know, you don't care. Um, but if you're into that, you're going to love Dolphin. Uh, so, Enough said there, I've said it a lot. The other thing you cannot overlook, you simply cannot overlook, is how configurable and customizable Plasma is. 
And so that's just an inherent part to it. But what I have realized is that it doesn't have to be uh, something that you have to spend time with. You can go in and tweak a few things and get it very clean as you see it here. And so that's kind of the joy of plasma. Um, you know, neon itself, I'm sure it's you know, going to be just as nice with Kubuntu, the latest version of Kubuntu, or any other uh, Linux operating system that has the plasma desktop in place. But I can speak to the fact that plasma is there. It has arrived. It is a modern, clean, fast, cohesive, unified desktop environment that works so well with this latest version that I don't know that I could ever go back to a GTK-based distribution, even though there are some really tremendously nice distros available now. We're so fortunate, folks, to be Linux users. Um, when someone looks at you and kind of strangely when you say you run Linux, you know what? Wear that as a badge of honor. You are a Linux user. You run an operating system with selection of desktop that, you know, is, is really what you want to make it. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a geek's dream. Um, you know, wear that with a badge of honor. Know that you've got a system that you can customize and make your own depending on whatever desktop you use. I'd highly recommend you give Plasma a look because it's more customizable than anything else out there. But, you know, wear that as a badge of honor because you can set up a system like you see here, um, you know, to use everything within one dock. Or you could set up a system with five different panels. You could set up a system with widgets. You, I mean, you name it. The list goes on and on and on. And you can make your Linux operating system do things that folks using Windows would pay money for. You know, they're buying apps to do things, that, you know, to... to change the look of Windows 10 and before that definitely to change the look of Windows 8 and then you flip over to the Mac side of things and you know Apple's philosophy is you're going to like what we present to you and how we present it to you and we're going to tell you what you think you like or what you are going to like because we said it's good and so you know that's hogwash I, that's one of the reasons I'm so irritated anytime I see something Apple or Mac I'm like you know what I don't need you folks to tell me what I like. I like to go in and set things up, even though, you know, this looks like a Mac here with the bottom with the dock and everything. Uh, but again, I chose this. It wasn't forced on me. So again, badge of honor when you're talking to somebody about, man, I'm running Linux now, and they look at you strange. Just, you know, have some pride over it because it is an awesome thing. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. Have a great weekend. And uh, for a special Linux Quest viewer out there, and you know who you are, I'm just going to say check you later. <laughs>